In this video, you're gonna learn how to get an awesome shimmer reverb effect in Ableton Live using only the stock plugins. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds where we believe in making software like Ableton Live fun and easy to use for worship musicians. We're always putting out new free Ableton how-to and tutorial videos, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm also gonna include a link in the description of this video to a big download of free Ableton Worship Keys patches. And I'm gonna be using one of those free patches in today's tutorial video. So if you'd like, you can pause the video, click that link, you'll get an immediate download of a ton of free patches, and then you can follow along with the actual sound that I'm gonna be using for the rest of this tutorial. Okay, let's dive in and talk a little bit about how you can add a shimmer reverb effect to any Ableton Live project or set. Shimmer reverb is a really popular sound in modern worship music, and there's no default shimmer effect in Ableton Live, but we're able to string together a combination of audio effects with a little bit of creativity to approximate a really nice, lush shimmer reverb sound. So to get started with this, you're gonna open up any version of Ableton Live 9 or 10, intro, standard, or suite. And I've got the dark analog pad, which is a free patch of the week. It sounds like this. So there's not a lot of high frequency content here and it doesn't have a giant long sustained tail. And this is a perfect candidate for adding some of that ethereal shimmer up in the higher registers. So to start off with, you can create this effect on a specific MIDI track inside an audio effect rack if you'd like, but we're gonna do this globally inside the set by changing up the reverb bus inside the Ableton set. So to start off with, we're gonna add an audio effect rack to the existing reverb bus. And if you don't have a reverb bus, that's okay. Go ahead and create one. You can name it Shimmer, and then you're just gonna drag in an audio effect rack. And then I'm gonna drag this existing reverb inside of it. And then for now, just so you can hear exactly what's happening, I'm gonna bypass the reverb effect. And then we'll go ahead and minimize it. Now we're gonna add a few more audio effects and I'm gonna add these one at a time so you can hear the difference that each one makes. To start off with, we're going to add an instance of the grain delay. This is sort of the secret sauce of getting a shimmer effect inside of Ableton Live because it's gonna give us the ability to pitch up the sound. And the distillation of the ingredients in a shimmer effect are something diffusing and washing everything out, usually a big reverb sound, and then something shifting that wash up an octave or even two octaves, and then some further spreading out, usually with another reverb, and we're also gonna add in a little bit of a delay. But the most important thing to nail is that the octave up effect has to be nice and clean. And because there's no octave or pitch shifting audio effect in Ableton Live, we're gonna use the grain delay to do this for us. So you're basically gonna to want to take these settings and apply them one to one, and you can experiment a little bit with these settings as you go, but this is gonna give you a good place to start from. All right, so to start off with, you wanna set the frequency to about five hertz. Then we wanna take the pitch all the way up to 12. Leave random pitch set to zero, feedback set to zero, and then the dry wet mix, I like to start with about 75%. And the last thing you need to do is uncheck the sync box and set the time all the way up to 128. Now, I'm gonna solo this audio effect, and then I'm gonna send some of our MIDI track through so you can hear only the shimmer effect on its own. Now remember, there's nothing else happening, it's just pitch shifting up right now, so it's gonna sound a little bit uh, artifact heavy, very artificial, but that's okay, we're gonna smooth this out in the next step. So here's how it sounds. So it's pretty goofy, it's got a little bit of warble and some artifacting happening, but that's okay because we're gonna diffuse all of this out in just a second. So if you'd like, you can take time now to play around with some of these settings. You can get different sorts of characteristics to this shimmer. You can even add additional octaves up by increasing this feedback. But this is a good baseline that I found gives me really good results, especially once we start to wash everything out. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go back to this reverb plugin and we're just gonna turn it back on. And then we're gonna increase the size of the reverb to a pretty large size and increase the decay time to about 10 seconds. We're also gonna apply some input processing and cut just a little bit of the lows. And then in early reflections, we're gonna add some more modulation. I like to bring the speed up to just over one hertz. And then we're gonna also increase the volume of the diffuse a little bit. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit less of that aggressive pitch shifting forward, but it's still way too prominent. You're gonna notice it. So the next thing we need to do is spread things out even further. So we're gonna grab an instance of the ping pong delay and place it after the grain delay. I'm gonna minimize this guy and this guy. All right, and we're just gonna use the default setting here. And this is doing exactly what we need. It's spreading things out in the stereo field. It's just moving stuff around so there's nothing too direct and centered about this effect because it's supposed to be ambient. It's supposed to be sort of blooming up in the background. So just that ping pong delay spreading things around left and right. And then the last ingredient for us is gonna be another instance of reverb. And again, I'm doing all of this within the audio effect rack. And we're gonna do basically the same type of processing here that we did in the initial reverb plugin. We're gonna bring the size up, we're gonna bring the decay time up, and modulate the early reflections. And I'm gonna bring the mix of the dry wet up a little bit as well. And then also bring this chorus modulation to the diffusion up to about 1.5. So here's how this sounds all together. be a little bit too much modulation there. We don't want it to be too off pitch, but a little bit of pitch modulation here is what gives it that lush sort of cavernous feel. I'm gonna take that high cut out and then cut a little bit of the lows again, just to make sure there's not too much low end buildup. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this sounds. On its own, it's still a pretty prominent effect, but remember, this is meant to be added in on top of the original signal. Right now we're just listening to it soloed. So I'm gonna turn solo off, and now we can hear the original sound from the MIDI track along with this bust shimmer effect. So here they are together. And we can increase or decrease the prominence by sending more or less signal through to the bus. bring it out right there. So that's how you can approach adding a shimmer effect to any sound in Ableton Live. Once you've got this audio effect rack set up, you can save it as a preset if you'd like by just clicking the save icon here in the top right. You can name it Shimmer Bus and then you're able to add it in to any MIDI track or to any bus effect that you'd like. And that's all there is to it. Be sure to experiment with the settings inside of these plugins because they can have a really big effect on the type and character of shimmer effect that you achieve. We use this exact technique to bring an awesome shimmer reverb sound to our Sunday Keys template for Ableton Live. If you're serious about sounding awesome and playing your worship keys sounds through Ableton, then Sunday Keys is designed for you and it comes with an awesome shimmer effect ready to go. So I'll include a link in the description of this video so you can check out Sunday Keys for Ableton for yourself. If you're an Ableton Keys player, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell before you exit out of this video because we're putting out new Ableton how-to and tutorial videos all the time. Thanks for watching.